Time now for Ask the Expert. Are the new prenatal genetic, is the new prenatal genetic test that's out there reliable? Some new questions have surfaced and Dr. Brian Baer is here with us today to talk about an important topic. Uh, the first question I, say, I, I, I have about this is who is getting these prenatal tests? Who wants to screen for these particular problems? Well, I think all today in today's society and healthcare market, we are, the American College has asked us to offer these tests to all pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So how have things changed when you talk about prenatal testing? Well, traditionally, we've done a single test for trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, and this was done with either a blood test and or an ultrasound. And then, of course, some brilliant people came along and they decided that they were going to isolate baby's DNA out of a maternal blood. And they were able to do that not only for trisomy 21, but also the two other most common trisomies, 18 and 13, uh, which it's actually more accurate for those two than even the trisomy 21. Explain this, this newer, better accuracy that you can get with this test. Well, it's called cell-free DNA, and it's actually, we talk about false positives. And if it tells you it's a positive result, it's, if it's false or not. The old testing had a 5% false positive rate. This is actually 100 times lower at 0.6%. And it only tests for certain things. It's not everything across the board. No, it's, it tests for the most common abnormalities like trisomy 21, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13. So are there problems with this testing as far as it being reliable or not? It's been in the news. Well, it, it, it came to the national news, and that's why I wanted to talk about it, because it was a woman who was falsely positively diagnosed with trisomy 18, or Edwards syndrome. Mm -hmm. And she immediately had a knee-jerk response to schedule a termination and then did what she should have done, which was to call her doctor and say, should I get definitive testing where we find out for real if the baby has this, the disease or the chromosome abnormality? And then once she went for the testing, she found out it was in that 0.6% false positive rate, and she was greatly relieved. And when we, when we counsel people about this testing, we always start out before the testing and tell them that there are false positives but of course, pregnant women, all women who think about these things have tremendous anxiety over it. We all want a perfect baby. So the, the idea is do additional testing. Don't just have that knee-jerk reaction. Right. And, and you should expect if it comes back that it's a positive result, you should always expect that your doctor is going to tell you, let's definitively make sure of this before we do anything. All right, Dr. Brian Baer, thanks for coming in and talking about this. Have a question for any of our experts, email askthexpert at tmj4.com or leave a voicemail at that number right there on your screen.